Hello, I am Major General Christian Aldo Ritchie. I am the commander of the British Eighth Army. I have been assigned to destroy Rommel and the German Africa Corps, and I shall do so with my new army of superior British armor. Sound exciting? Shall we push the Hun back into the Mediterranean? Then let's go to war! Fire! Hello everybody, my name is Christian Aldo and welcome to The Plastic General. Oh, before we start, please remember to hit the subscription button so that we can always notify you about any of our future episodes. In today's show, we're going to be following the British 8th Army as it goes up against the German Africa Corps and Rommel in the earlier part of the North African campaign. Now, we got a whole bunch of cool early war British tanks to show you. Against the British tanks will be the Germans' dreaded 88 anti-aircraft slash anti-tank gun. Sound cool? Then let's get into it. Oh, I'm sweating like crazy in the hot... North African sun. Okay, so let's uh, introduce our first vehicle. This is a British tank called the Matilda. This is a 132 tank that was designed and released by Forces of Valor. Now, let's do a little background about the Matilda. It was, a, it was an early war uh, a tank that was designed in the late 30s, mid-30s. <clears throat> And um, it's, it had kind of a, a small caliber gun. I think it was a, a 50 millimeter gun. It was very, very, very well, ridiculously well armored, but it was very slow. And so it was already behind the times when they went up against uh, the Africa Corps. And uh, just for scale, it shows you the, the basic size of the tank. Uh, this is a spare fuel tank back here and some exhaust lines here. And oh, this is a, a grenade launcher. Uh, and the turret, and it comes with a nice commander figure, and um, it's a really nice tank. So the Matilda, 132 by Forces of Valor. And so for our second tank, may I introduce the Valentine, the British Valentine, and this was a very prevalent tank at the beginning of the North African campaigns. And this particular 132 scale model was created by 3D Printer Chick. Uh, she's our official sponsor for the Plastic General. It's a uh, early war tank. There's a figure for comparison. It's got a two pounder gun, which, as soon as they were using the two pounder gun, they already realized they started to realize that it wasn't a big enough gun. Spare fuel tank. And on the turret, you have a, uh, the hatch and a stowage compartment. And uh, it's a really cool tank. And uh, if you want to fight in North Africa, you're going to need some of these. And again, this was created by 3D Printer Chick on eBay. Look it up. And it's a 132 scale tank. And finally, for British tank number three, may I introduce the Bishop. Now, what this tank was... It basically was, it was the Valentine tank. Because the Valentine tank was starting to fall out of favor in, uh, on the battlefield, what they did is they removed the turret and then, re and then replaced it with this big armored superstructure. And then inside of it, they just placed a 25-pounder uh, a cannon. So basically, it was just a cannon on wheels. And it would fire on a location, and then it would drive away. It was... Um, it, it was a little bit of a failure of a tank, but they were very, very common in North Africa and very needed. The, um, the hatch here opens up, so you can, you can either have, you can glue it down shut, or you can make a little hinge for it, like I'm going to make, and you can put the uh, Forces of Valor figure inside of it. So it's a, it's a great tank. So, so this turret did not move. It was a solid turret, and... Um, and it's got a viewer, um, a periscope up here. It's got some spare tracks in the back, spare fuel tank, 
And it's got the uh, big old 25 pounder gun, a little bit of exhaust off to the side here. Also created by 3D printer chick, the British Bishop in 132 scale. Okay, for our first set of figures, we're going to look at the Britain's Detail British Eighth Army. And it was a set of six poses plus two more poses. Plus two more poses. And we'll get into that. So the first two figures here, you have a commander with a pistol and a commander's cap. And here you have a, a Tommy holding a British-style Tommy gun. A British-style Thompson that was used in North Africa. which I have a real Thompson we're going to show later on in this episode. Poses three and four. Kneeling, firing a heavy Bren machine gun, and standing sharp shooting a Lee Enfield. Poses five and six. Ad slowly advancing forward holding his Lee Enfield rifle with bayonet attached and, um, and running with rifle and bayonet. As you've noticed, they have their classic garb of the, of the British Eighth Army. They have their high schoolboy socks. Their, their schoolboy socks are up nice and high. They're wearing their shorts. Uh, they're wearing uh, their, 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 um, their shirts are, are rolled up in the, by the sleeve. And their helmets are bare and they're painted a light tan color. So, for add-on poses, seven and eight, you have a Vickers team uh, for a Vickers machine gun. So, you have the guy sitting on an ammo box here, firing the Vickers, and you have his machine gun partner feeding him the ammunition. Now, when, this, when these figures were originally released, they were affixed to one big heavy metal base, which I don't like that. So, I removed them from the base, and of course glued them to uh, thin, plain polystyrene. But this is a little bit more rare than the other foot sol soldier figures. So uh, they, they still float around on the, on the marketplace. They're not that expensive, but they're great figures. Now for add-on poses, 9 and 10. These are special. Uh, this figure exclusively came with a a British truck, so he'd be on the back of the truck firing off the hood of the truck. But the, the, it was a 1970s vehicle. They didn't. They, it was not a World War II vehicle, so I removed him from the vehicle, and um, I prefer to have him like this, so I can set him up against anything, and it'll work nicely. And, but this figure, this is a, a very interesting one that I discovered accidentally. I originally had this figure first, and then when I found a vintage British Eighth Army figure, I realized that for some reason, something must have happened with the mold. So all the originals are, had a commander's cap, but they eventually changed it, his head, to a, um, a normal Brody helmet, a Mark III helmet or a Mark II helmet, whichever one it is. I don't know. So watch out for this. These are the old ones, and these tend to be the newer issues. So here they are, all 10 poses of 132 scale British 8th Army, made by Britain's Detail, circa 1970, 71, 72, maybe even 73. Lots of them are still kicking around, so build your 8th Army. And for one more added bonus, it's the Britain's Detail Daimler Dingo Scout Car also made by Britain's Detail. Now, uh, these things pop up. They were made in the early 70s, and there's still lots of them around. But here's the catch. It's not as important for you to get them with the figures. Why? Sadly, because the figures are really rinky-dinky. For example, this is a 132 scale figure, and look how small these guys are in comparison. They're barely even 135th scale. 
So don't let it deter you if you see one of these scout cars without the drivers. I mean, it's better to have them with that little dinky commander and the dinky driver. But if you don't have them, that's fine too. But maybe they can just live in here and they'll be fine. It kind of, you can fool yourself. There it is by Britain's Detail. And it's got a really nice machine gun that moves around. And there you have it. Now, what good is the British 8th Army if you don't have their mortal enemies to fight? The, the German Africa Corps, and here is their dreaded secret weapon. The German 88mm anti-aircraft gun, which they eventually figured out that they could turn it on to tanks. Can blow tanks away from about three kilometers. So this particular 132 scale model was created by Forces of Valor, and it was just released a little over a year ago. And uh, I'll give you a little tour of the of the of the artillery piece here. Here's a little wheel where you can elevate the gun, and then there's another little wheel. If you turn it, it'll turn back and forth like this. It's got a little seat here for a figure. Um, it loads in from the back, and it's got the little hatch. And uh, this thing can also fold up, and it comes with the limber. Now, I couldn't put this together for you right now, but it would also roll around like this. So it could be towed by a truck, and they could, it could roll around on the wheels and fire and then, then keep moving its position. But I prefer to have it. I prefer to have the limber off to the side. And the gun... Is like this now with this amazing amazing gun came an eight figure set and i'm going to introduce you to these guys right now starting with the first figure sitting in the seat here looking into the um into the periscope the um telescopic uh viewfinder so here he is aiming the gun then this sitting figure is doing something really fascinating that I never knew about until I got the set. This guy sits right in here. You can get that in there. And, and he's, uh-oh, his head came off. Look at that. Look, look, look what happens. Oh, my God. Where is the super glue when you need it? Anyways, his head just pops back in there. He loses his head. He gets overly excited. Okay, so this guy, get in there. No more losing your head. He's actually operating the calibration system. So by using this weird dial here, they could set they could set the artillery so that it would explode at a certain timing. So if they wanted this gun to take out a tank, that's not a problem. But if they also put in a, 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 a high explosive shell, they could use that timer so that the shell would, would go off at a certain height or at a certain time to create an explosion over troops or at airplanes or whatever. So, so you have two figures actually sitting in their, in their neat little spots. Now, the next figure, I sort of glued this together myself, but you have all the components to do that. Um, this guy is sort of unloading ammunition. So let's say he'd be way back here. And he'd be unloading ammunition boxes. Uh, this guy over here is carrying the ammunition to the gun. Then you have another guy. This guy's loading the ammunition into the breech of the gun. Uh, figure, figure number five would be operating the wheels here, the elevation. Figure number six, this is a, this is a three-dimensional range finder. So he could he could help um, zero in on where on uh, on where the target would be. So he'd be off to the side, and then for the main piece in the set, this is actually a character figure of Erwin Rommel himself, the legendary Desert Fox, and it actually looks like him too. Get in there, nice and close. Look at look at er, look at look at his face. That is Erwin Rommel. That's the Desert Fox. There he is. So he would be right here monitoring the situation. So there you have it. Forces of Valors, 132 scale, German 88 millimeter anti-aircraft slash anti-tank gun by Forces of Valor. 
and for the next thing that we're going to cover today, but I'm not going to go into this today. I'm going to show you what I did as a conversion. This is a German half-track artillery truck, and uh, it's made by Forces of Valor, but, but you know what? The Plastic General will not abide. So I, I had an extra one of these, and I did this with it. But the Plastic General does not abide. So what I did, I had an extra one of those half-tracks, and I had an extra German 88. So what did I do? I attached it on the back. So instead of having a, a dumb quad gun, which you've seen a million times, now I have an 88. Now, now there's going to be some historical sticklers there, and they'll say, you can't do that. The 88 was too powerful for the back of that truck. But, but I just don't listen. I just don't obey the rules of history. This is good enough for me. Until they come up with those one of those giant tanks that accommodate that, this is good enough. It's exciting. Now let me show you how cool this will be when it works. Okay, so again, with the crew, um, let's start off here. We got the we got the guy who keeps losing his head. A sniper took his head. So you have the one guy calibrating the gun like this. Then you have this guy um, sitting in here like that. Uh, with the gun, and uh, he's being a viewfinder guy, and look over here, you have the guys loading and giving, handing up artillery, and you have a guy here operating the gun, so it works awesome, and, and of course, the commander will be right here at, at, at the front of the gun, so when the gun goes off, so do his ears, his ears, <laughs> anyways, he'll be down here. And uh, it's a, it's a, if you have an extra one of these. So here we have the 88 mounted on the German uh, um, a motorized uh, half track. And so for all you rich kids out there that have extra toys to destroy and make into something really cool you can convert your vehicles and your 88 into something really useful like this. Well then, now that you're all here, come a little closer. Take a, take a look at this map, this accurate map of the situation. Um, over here, you see the Germans are, are barely hanging on. Now they have a few small artillery pieces and uh, with, with a little bit of uh, some defensive perimeter, nothing much. But here, here, this is me. Come here, this is me, and with my defensive perimeter, because I want, need to be well defended. And these are all of our new British tanks, superior to what the Jerry's have. Then we will simply move forward like this, and we shall, we shall take them out and destroy them where they stand. So what do you say? Is that a sound plan? I think so too. Come on! Try to fire over there! Well, wait a minute!
I just took out the uh, another 88. This uh, Valentine's tank made by 3D Printer Chick is one hell of a tank. Anyway, uh, look, that's all for today, folks. But uh, before I go, I just want to remind you to please hit the subscription button and hit the little bell, of course, so you'll be notified about future episodes. And if you have any questions or uh, you have any requests or you want to call out some historical inaccuracies, don't waste your time. You'll never find them here on this show. The Plastic General always does his research. Anyway, my name is Christian Aldo. I'm the Plastic General. Long live 132 World War II. See you next time. Mm -hmm.